Now I know some of you guys are saying, show me the data, show me the data already. So here it is. <laughs> I utilized his matches from Olympic qualifications uh, where he won and two fights where he lost, where he fought Jason Ishida and Aaron Cook. Let's take a look. So here is what I did. The data actually ended up looking somewhat like a sinusoidal function. So I used a Fourier analysis to see if I could derive a pattern out of this seemingly unrelated series of actions. So after I applied the Fourier transform, the data starts to look something like this. Uh, the eigenvalues show that the solutions are actually monomials, so that the Hermite functions are actually bounded. This means absolutely nothing because I'm making this up. Let's take a real look at this. Recording the data onto a chart and watching Steven's fights in slow motion in an entirety showed me that Steven is a very efficient fighter. This means that he will adjust his pace to his opponent so that his pace is just slightly higher than his opponent's. Just enough to win. From what I have seen, Steven is capable of fighting a very broad spectrum of paces. He can slow things down to throwing maybe three kicks uh, during the entire match, and then he can spice things up and kick like a million kicks uh, for all three rounds. Why wouldn't you want to go buck wild for all three rounds all the time? Fighting at 100% intensity for all three rounds is like saying uh, someone would order a pizza that costs $19.57 and when the pizza man gets there, he decides to pay him a uh, hundred bucks. <laughs> Unnecessary. In this uh, particular analogy, Steam would pay the man uh, $19 and exactly 57 cents. No tip. <laughs> I don't know if he does this in real life, but I'm saying he's, he's very efficient. He only does what he exactly needs to do. Um, I'm also not saying uh, don't pay the delivery man because that's inefficient. Tip your delivery man. <laughs> I made a list of recurring moves that he does that are very effective. One, strong impression when the round starts. Two, low risk pressure. Three, always the last one to kick during an exchange. Four, rarely caught moving back. Most of the time, Steven comes out hot out the gates when the round starts. He throws hard kicks, engages often, and barely gives space in the first round. As the opponent receiving this sort of pressure, he's probably thinking, oh my god, if it's gonna be three rounds of this, I'm completely screwed. <laughs> I mean, it takes a mental toll. Often, opponents who go up against Steven are incredibly nervous before the uh, match even starts. Uh, so if they receive this sort of pressure in the first round, it can destroy their morale for the rest of the match. Of course, Steven seems to slow down the pressure about midway through the first round to conserve his energy. There really is no need to continue the intense pressure if the mental damage is already done. Remember the pizza analogy. If the opponent is someone like Aaron Cook, Jason Ishida, or TJ Curry, uh, Steven will be forced to continue his intense pressure for a lot longer than he wants to because they will not give in to his high pressure. And so here lies Steven's second part of his trap. 